Hi everybody, Ben here, and today I would like to show you how to make bread in a pot. Uh, this is really very, very straightforward. Basically, it's just uh, my variation on a no-need recipe that's been floating around on the web and in magazine articles for the last couple of years. But uh, baking is a great skill to have, and it's also, um, if you care about what you eat, uh, you're paying attention to corn syrup and food additives and things like that. When you bake your own bread, you have control over what's in it. And the other thing is you can get an amazing loaf of bread uh, with really not a lot of effort. Uh, the main thing here is we need a little bit of prep time. This recipe calls for resting for eight hours. So what I usually do is I mix up uh, the dough the night before I'm going to bake it. So let's uh, start off with what we need here. Of course, we're gonna need our cast iron pot, mixing bowl, and our ingredients. We're gonna start off with a quarter uh, teaspoon of active dry yeast. Um, if you don't do a, l a lot of baking, those little uh, packets are great. If you do more baking, um, a jar like this is great. You're gonna need uh, a cup and a half of warm water. Um, I usually just put that in there, microwave it for, oh, 45 seconds or so. Uh, you're gonna need three cups of flour and you're going to need some salt, about a teaspoon and a half. You're also going to need to preheat the oven to 475 degrees, but we're not gonna do that until tomorrow. Cause remember, this is the night before we're just preparing the dough. So we're gonna start off uh, mixing the yeast into the warm water in the bowl and then add the salt, flour, and mix it up. Now for flour, I'm using two cups of a natural, all-purpose, unbleached white flour and one cup of a natural, organic, whole wheat flour. That's it. You don't have to overmix it. If it's a little wet and shaggy, that's just fine. Don't worry about it. Instead, cover it with plastic wrap. and put it somewhere it can sit overnight. I usually throw it on top of my refrigerator. Uh, in fact, I did exactly that last night. Um, this batch I mixed up in a clear bowl, just so you can see that there's the bubbles going on, that because the, the yeast it rose. Now what we're gonna do is just flop this out, just kind of roll it a little bit, make it into a ball, and then set it off to the side. Okay, now all I'm gonna do here is I've got a little flour uh, always fun for making a mess. Just gonna take this uh, dough that we started last night, plop it out onto the table. And uh, we're not trying to overwork this. We're not trying to knead it, anything like that. Just kind of uh, give it a little bit of shape. Any bubbles that uh, would have been coming out will get out. We're not uh, trying to make this flat or anything. Just kind of give it a little shape. Just work it just a little bit, get a little flour on the outside so that it's not sticky anymore. And make it into more or less a ball. It's going to be about a pound and a half or so. Maybe just stretch it around, give it a little bit more of a round shape. Uh, that's about it. Just that. And then what I'm going to do is I've got... Um, a bowl with a clean dish towel in it. I'm gonna do this in the style of an English toasting bread. So I'm gonna take a little cornmeal, which uh, makes it kind of non-stick and it also adds a little flavor and color to the finished bread. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in here, a little bit on that. And then take the dough, plop it in there, cover it with the other half of the towel and let it sit for an hour or two. Now, while we're waiting for the bread to do that secondary rise, let's talk about your pot, because there's two things that are important about making this bread turn out as nice as it does. One is that long overnight initial rise time, and the other is the fact that we bake the, the bread right inside a pot, something heavy and with a lid. 
Uh, just to show you, I got a couple of different pots here. Uh, over here, this is a traditional black cast iron Dutch oven. This is what I take with me when I go out camping. It's great over uh, campfires and coals and outdoor cooking. Now, one thing to keep in mind with that style of a Dutch oven is a lot of times the ones that are used outdoors have feet on the bottom. Now, this one doesn't because this one's actually a, a stew pot. It's really more designed for being suspended. But if you have a true Dutch oven for outdoor use with the feet on the bottom, uh, it's not a big deal. All you have to do is put the pot on a cookie sheet inside your oven. Otherwise, those feet are going to get uh, tangled in the grate of your oven rack. Now, this right here is a stew pot, but this is ceramic. Uh, this can work just fine too. It doesn't have to be cast iron, but I do prefer cast, uh, the cast iron. These I'm always afraid I'm going to drop and have it break. Uh, another thing interesting is on the shape of this particular one, the, uh, the top of the lip comes in a little bit. So you can bake a loaf of bread in here and it can actually be kind of difficult to get out because the, uh, the top of the bowl is sort of uh, comes in. Uh, instead of flaring out the way that these do too. These two do. Now right here, this is uh, pretty much my favorite cooking pot. This is a modern enameled cast iron, and believe it or not, it looks like it's a Le Creuset, but it's not. Uh, those are a little pricey for me. This is actually a Lodge brand, but what I did was I modified it. The original uh, knob for the lid is a thermoplastic, and it's good up to a certain temperature. But the metal knob from Le Creuset is good for a higher temperature. Plus, I think it looks nicer and it's very, very easy to replace. Um, it's literally just one screw. So although it might be uh, two or three hundred bucks for a nice uh, Le Creuset pot, it's only like five or seven dollars for just that knob. So all you have to do is pull that screw out and replace um, this uh, simpler, lower temperature, uh, less fancy knob with a nicer metal one. Uh, Le Creuset is great stuff. Um, like I said, it is a little pricey. Uh, here's another neat little pot. This one um, I inherited. It was cast iron made in Belgium. Really, really neat stuff. It just happens to be a little bit small for this bread recipe. In this case, what we want to do is have a pot that's an appropriate size for the loaf of bread. And this pot right here seems to work pretty well for that. When we're getting close to our bake time, we're going to want to preheat the oven to 475 and put the cast iron pot in the oven. That way the Dutch oven's getting preheated at the same time your baking oven is. Uh, let it preheat for about half an hour. And then once it's ready, uh, pull the hot cast iron out. And what we're going to do here is we're going to transfer that dough into this hot pot. And part of the trick to that is we already put it on this uh, clean towel here. So we can just use that to pick it up and then drop it down right inside the oven. And since we had that little bit of cornmeal on there, it just rolls right out. It doesn't stick on there or anything. And put the lid on and pop it right back in the oven. And now we're gonna let that bake for half an hour with the lid on. And after that, we're gonna take the lid off and bake it for another 20 minutes. Okay, time's up. So let's pull the bread out of the oven. Now keep in mind that cast iron pot is ridiculously hot right now, so use oven mitts. And all I'm gonna do is put it out on a drying rack here. Drying rack, cooling rack. Now this one, um, this was a part whole wheat bread, so it's gonna be a little bit darker in color than a all white flour bread would be. If this was all white flour, it would have a little bit lighter colored crust. 
Um, it'd be kind of uh, golden brown on the outside, nice and white on the inside. This one's gonna be a little darker crust and then it's gonna be a more brown color on the inside as well. Uh, a little bit more of a homey rustic look to it. It's very good whether you do it as an all white flour bread or as a uh, part white flour, part whole wheat bread. Either one turns out just great. So there you go, that's bread in a pot. If you really wanna go hog wild with this, you could use the same baking technique and recipe to make uh, dinner rolls, sausage rolls. Um, you could add uh, cheese or different seasonings to the top of the bread. Uh, go wild with it. But uh, until next time, this is Bread in a Pot.